Hello, welcome to another Sonic Lab. I'm Roshan Toshwajitunga from Wish Productions, and today we're going to be looking at some software goodies from Universal Audio. Universal Audio decided to release the latest upgrade of their Console 2 application, so we thought this would be a good opportunity to have a, a sort of working look at, at Console 2. Now, you've already been given the full overview in a previous, previous review, so I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but just show you some of the things that I like about it from a workflow point of view and see what kind of improvements it actually makes in, in reality. And this is the um, Console 2 application. Just as a reminder, this is what Console 1 looked like. Um, a lot more cluttered and you know shorter faders, things like that, not, not very accurate. So we've got a much more high resolution interface. Immediately, the first thing that I love about this is um, everything's one click away pretty much all the important features and functionality, they all pop out as you click. I like this meter bridge. Uh, it means that if you can't, haven't got, you've got a lot of channels on there, but you haven't got everything on screen, you can see, for example, I've got a mic up on over there. You can just jump to it and get to that channel. So it's very handy for quickly seeing, you know, what's going on on your setup, especially if you've got a couple of um, systems chained together and you've got a whole load of inputs across there. Um, so in overview mode, I mean, you've got options to go into more detailed views, but I tend to work with overview because it's everything's there that I need. Things that I like here are organization, really. You've got now all the plugins have been categorized and organized depending on, like for the preamp settings, just the preamp ones come up in the main insert slots. Now you've got the list of all the inserts and they're categorized into folders, which just makes it a lot easier to find things rather than searching through the entire list. Another nice feature is you can set up channel strips. So they've nicely provided various combinations of plugins from producers and engineers around the world. And you can save your own. So setting up, you know, a compressor and a tape strip, as easy as that. Um, moving plugins around is very easy now. It's just drag and drop. You can um, alt, click and slide and duplicate. You can remove, I like that. It's just, it's very quick to set things up now. Setting up your sends and your cues, very good as well. I like that feature. Um, a, another thing on that, when one of the additions to the system that I'm, I'm quite pleased with is on the settings menu, you can now choose your to add additional cue buses. So for example, I can set up four cue mixes now. So if I go over here and look at the Q outputs, I can assign Q1 and 2 to headphones 1 and 2 on the Apollo. And then 3 and 4 I can send to ADAT 1 and 2, 3 and 4. So I can send up to four individual headphone mixes. And when you click in Send, here we've got now Find Control for each channel, what it sends to those headphone mixes. So this is um, very useful. Uh, another, another nice feature that's been added it's alternative monitor outputs. So you've got the choice of adding an extra one or two pairs of speakers. And these crop up over here on the control room panel. And what that means is you've now got Alt 1 and Alt 2, which you can trim so you can balance them. And typically I'd like to have, I'd have my Oritone monophonic speaker there, maybe a crappy pair of hi-fi speakers on there. Um, and now from the control panel, you can just switch between them quite easily. And you'll notice also the color changes on the Apollo, so you know which speaker set you're, you're working with. And again, another nice feature is a calibrated dim function. So we can just drop the level by a set amount, 20 dB, while monitoring. Again, these are really nice features for the monitoring side of things. Another much requested feature that's finally appeared is the ability to filter out your plugin list. So instead of having to wade through a massive list of plugins that you don't actually own, you can go into the main menu and hide them. That way, when you go into your browser, you'll only see the ones that you've elected to, to view. So again, another just saving little bits of time, but it all adds up. Um, MIDI implementation. Now, this is something that, uh, again, people have been asking about. And they've gone halfway there, which is a bit strange, really, because you think, why not go a little bit further and have full MIDI implementation? So what we've got is the ability to uh, map a MIDI controller to the tap tempo. So here I've got my Akai LPD-8. 
you can choose, it will automatically pick up the channel and the, the key that you're pressing. Um, and then down here on tap tempo, for example, it sets the tap tempo. It's good, you know, it's useful. I've used that for counting, working out tempos and setting up the sync on delays and things like that. But I think, you know, they could go further and we're hoping that over the next few months we'll see a full MIDI in implementation. So uh, we've seen some of the, the benefits there of console two, uh, nice improvements in workflow and, and speed. Um, it's not all roses though, there are obviously some, some downsides. Uh, first thing is processing power has gone up. So base load without any plugins in, my Apollo quad is registering 9% um, CPU usage. So if you've got lower, you know, a, a dual core processor or something like that, you're gonna see um, a lot more of your capacity taken up. Um, another another downside is, which is quite a contentious issue for many users, is that this is Thunderbolt only. Um, now UA say that they're working on the Firewire system and that should be out in autumn. But still, that's quite a, a major blow if you're a Firewire user, especially if you're someone who picked up an Apollo just before they started doing the deal with free Thunderbolt cards. Um, I can imagine that, that smarts a bit. And another downside, which um, some users, myself included, might find a bit of a pain, is that um, installing version 8 software disables the firewire on the interface, so it, you get a firmware upgrade, which means you can no longer use your Apollo over firewire. You can, if you want to, you need to reinstall version 7 software on the, the main computer, which will then downgrade the firmware back to that level so you can use firewire again. Um, this is quite a, a major point for me because I've got a, I use an old MacBook Pro which I take out for location shoots and that's Firewire only. So if I want to do that again, I need to take I need to downgrade the firmware on the Apollo. So it's a bit of a pain, and I hope it's something that will be addressed when the Firewire drivers come out for console two. In addition, I think there's a, a couple of things that it would be nice to see. I mean, we've talked about full MIDI implementation. I'd also like to see better metering. We've got already an improvement in the metering that they've given, but you could put something like the K system in there um, or, or some form of loudness measurement, so it makes that metering system a bit more useful. Uh, and maybe some kind of stereo spread indicator as well. So there you have it, an overview of console two.